Drew Young, and so here is Kevin Goodman Blue, Song Hoon Yi, and Emily Hollis, and we are Stick It. Stick It is a Chrome extension for online textbooks. It allows users to leave highlights on the text and also leave public notes that other people with the extension can see. This allows people to have open discussions on the actual textbooks themselves, as well as just more collaborative study habits so they can make sure they pass their classes or any tests or exams they have. Our user base includes anyone using open source textbook with a particular focus on high school students, college students, and third learners. We expect that college students will form the majority of our user base. In the United States, college tuition rises by 3 or 5% annually, which is outpacing our uh, inflation rate. Because of that, many schools are turning to using open source textbook. So which means our user base will grow over time. Uh, they, our students will use our products because users can explore question and answers from millions of students who are using the same textbook. There are a lot of classes already in the United States using an open source textbook and the questions from the, those classes are very repetitive. So if our product expands in two or three years, all the questions uh, seeking will encompass all the consumable questions come from those classes, which means our users can address any inquiries that they couldn't figure out in their classes. Secondly, users can leave questions anonymously on the open source textbook. However, uh, whatever it is simple or a complex questions. It makes help them uh, engage in the classes more with better background knowledge. Third, users can uh, users uh, study open source textbook tailored to their questions, liberating themselves from the constraints of of the uh, table of content in the on the textbook. Users can create a customized learning journey from the same textbook by searching for the relevant content with their own topic keywords. Sticky offers three main features. First, users can highlight certain sentences on the textbook. It helps them to understand that part and memorize that part for their exam. Second, Users can ask a question on the textbook or answer the question that left by others. Third, users can search for the relevant questions and answers with their own topic keywords. They want to know more. So to help you understand more, Drew is going to give you a hands-on demo. All right. Now we're going to pretend as if we are a student ourselves and we have Calculus 1 exam coming. So we downloaded this extension called Stick It. So we're just going to open it up. And here we don't have an account yet, so we're going to have to go to the sign up page and create an account. Here we just create a, a username, our username, which is B Parker. And then for an email, we have to, uh, email is required so we can get a confirmation code. So we're going to put in an uh, email. For the password, the password has a, the requirements of the password is eight characters long at least and then a combination of any three of an uppercase letter, lowercase letter, a number, or any special character. So I'm gonna put in a password here. And hit create an account. And then you can see it asked me for our confirmation email or our confirmation code that is sent to the email. So if we go to our email heel here and refresh. Now we got our confirmation code. Let's just copy this over, go back to the extension. Now back on the extension, you can see it brings us to the login page. So we just put in a uh, Parker again and try and log in. Oops. Now we've just put in our confirmation code and hit confirm. We can also resend the code if we didn't get the code to our email, but we got it. So we're just going to put that in. Now you can see it brings us to the login page, and you know, say we forgot our password. We can also you know put in our go to this forgot password link here and put in our username again. It could also be an email in that field. And then it'll ask you for a new confirmation code that's also sent to email. Just put in your new password and there you go, your password set. 
But I remember mine, so I'll just go back to the login screen. And log in. I type that wrong. There we are. So once you've logged into the extension, uh, you're presented with the home screen here. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, you just have your simple search bar here. You have a profile page. Um, which just has some basic information on it. Um, but the main event, of course, is that we have that Calc 1 exam coming up. So we're going to go ahead and study for it. This is OpenStax. This is a very popular uh, open source textbook website. And so here's, the, uh, here's their introduction to the Calc 1 textbook. And so I'm reading through here, studying for my exam, and I see you know, there's some dates here. Dates are always pretty important, especially in a math class. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight some of these dates. This is pretty important. I'm going to highlight this. This seems pretty important as well. Evaluating functions sounds important. But of course, you know, I'm not always just gonna. I'm not always just gonna be highlighting things. Um, I'm gonna take notes. So of course, you know, we have these. We have this earthquake of magnitude 8.2. I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure what they. I'm not sure what the authors mean by this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a note here. And this brings me to this note page, which shows the context of the note that I'm leaving. So I can ask. So I can go ahead and leave my note here. And when I refresh the page, you can see it leaves my highlight and my note. Whenever notes are saved, not only does it save, of course, the note contents that I typed, but also the highlighted text that you left, the user that left that note, and the date it was left. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. Um, the highlights, I should, uh, I should note that the highlights are private to my, to my user. Uh, these, these are only shown to me. I can't see highlights that anybody else leaves because it, be, it would be quite uh, cluttering. So highlights are only private to each user, but, <coughs> notes are, but notes are always public. So anybody can see these notes that I'm leaving. So I'm done on this interaction page. I'm gonna go ahead and head off to 1.5 here. Talking about exponential and um, logarithmic functions. And I'm gonna see if anybody else has left some notes here. So there are some notes left here. Um, I did, these, aren't, these aren't my notes, these are notes left by some random members of the public. So I'm curious as to what these people are talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight something in this, in this paragraph and see what they're talking about. So of course I see the context, I see the notes that they've left, and I see this person's asking about hyperbolic functions, and it means it relates to hyperbola. So that's, that's good information, I'm, I'm, glad that I, I'm glad that I know that now. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty useful to have this, uh, this you know, a simple AB conversation presented to me here. So I'm, I'm not gonna leave any notes here, you know, this is, you know, they, they don't need me here, they've already answered their question. Uh, so I can of course keep scrolling through this page, looking at different notes people are leaving. And leaving my own highlights, so I can highlight, you know, stuff I'm down here. That's pretty important. This is bold. You can tell my join highlight this as well. And uh, leave some different highlights here. Uh, but you know, of course, I might, I might come back to, uh, I might come back to my, to my question that I left originally. So I'm gonna come to the extension here, and I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna, I'll type in you know, one of the, one of the questions that I asked. And so of course I get a whole bunch of different results because this, this search is keyword based. And there's a whole bunch of different people asking these questions. But, and I don't really care about what these other people are asking about. You know, I only care about what my question was. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on private search here. And I'm gonna see, there's my question. So I'm gonna open that link in my new tab. Let me scroll down here. And there we go, somebody else left a note here. Uh, I wanna see what they said. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And there we go, they've answered my question. A larger magnitude means a more severe earthquake. Thank you, it's pretty interesting. So of course I don't want to I don't want to actually leave any notes here, so I'm just going to close out of this, refresh the page, and there we go. So, you know I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about this calc exam now. I've had I've had some questions. I've had my questions answered. I've seen other people get their questions answered. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going to hand off back to Drew. All right. So once we're done studying, we can always just stay logged in and it'll remember you. But we're just going to log out for now and make sure that nobody else can use our extension. So now that we're logged out, I can just refresh the page again. You can see. I'm not logged in. I'm not seeing any notes or any of my highlights that I had. Right, let's go back. Now, when building this extension, the tool we used the most was AWS or Amazon Web Services. Almost every main feature that we have in our extension utilizes AWS or one of its services in some way. So AWS has a great many of different kinds of services or tools that you can use. And that's one of the reasons why we use them because we knew that using AWS, you know, our data is going to be secure, our user information is going to be secure. And as the extension grows or if we build on the extension, we know that with AWS, we can scale up more easily. The main services that we use for Ada, from AWS is Cognito, uh, RDS, or uh, Cognito, Lambda, and RDS. 
Cognito is what handles all, all of our user management, like the login or the sign up. And to access the Lambda, the Lambda services, you first have to use the Cognito service and you first have to authenticate with it before you can communicate with it. And then from there, Lambda, which is basically code that's stored on the cloud or the AWS server, with, once you're logged in with Cognito, then you can access the Lambda and access the code that's on there. And that's what's in charge of actually communicating with the database and then communicating uh, data between the two. And the database is stored all in RDS. So, uh, so when, we're, when we're developing this extension, the first, uh, the first main uh, Amazon <coughs> service that we, that we wanted to get to grips with was Cognito because we, we, we wanted to prioritize getting user information and user privacy and profiles and things like that down pretty quickly. So there's, there's three main pillars that, that Cognito um, helps us with here. The first, of course, is authentication. Second is authorization. And the third is user data safety. So there's a few diagrams here which, which illustrate what I mean. So essentially, when you're, when you're signing up or logging into the extension, um, it's, it's simply making an API call to, to the Cognito uh, service to pass that user information. It authenticates that user information, comparing it to our user pool. And then if that user is authenticated properly, it passes back a token. And that token has associated with it the, the authority of that user. So there's, a, there's another service offered by AWS called IAM, or Identity Access Management. And so based on, based on whatever roles or permissions that user has, the token um, that is passed back to the extension can then be applied to all the different AWS services that we're using. So in our case, we're using Lambda and RDS. Um, and so those are the first two main uh, pillars. But the third pillar is, is in some ways most important, which is, which is keeping user data safe. That was one of our, that was one of our big priorities. And so we made sure to use Cognito in such a way where we are never handling sensitive user information like passwords. All of that stuff is being immediately handed straight off to RDS and, and AWS, where it's passed behind their multiple layers of security um, to just try to keep as, as much user information safe uh, as we can. And so once, once the user is authenticated and authorized, uh, and they're using the extension, then they're gonna be interacting with, with Lambda. We mainly use Lambda in order to interact with the database. So that was for saving and loading highlights and saving and loading notes. Um, in order to save the highlights and notes, we would first encode all of the variables that we wanted to send to the database. Then we would attach them to the Lambda URL in order to send them off to the database. In order to load the notes, we would first connect to the database. Then we would query all the variables that we needed and we would uh, we would uh, check the uh, user ID for the highlights and then we would check the web URL for the notes in order to load the appropriate thing. We load the highlights based off user ID because we, highlights are private while notes are public to everyone. So we just do that based off of the web page. Our RDS stores the user ID and info for highlight and notes. And it also is engaged with a search function, with a lambda function, with a keyword. And the reasons why we chose RDS are these three. First, availability. Our physical server of AWS is in Ohio. It is supported by another two backup servers, ensuring the continuous operation even in the uh, event of server failure. Second, security. It has strong security features. All the data are stored in our RDS is encrypted. This kind of protection is extend to the data that's being sent to Lambda function. Third, scalability. RDS can proactively its capability when our user grows so fast. So we don't have to worry about the user experience even when our users exponentially grow. So yeah, that's the reason why we chose this RDS. So when we were initially designing the extension, um, the original idea was, was Song Hoon's idea. He, he envisioned a, a more conversational forum-like um, uh, textbook extension that would allow users to have you know, very directed conversations with each other. Um, and so you can see some of the early mock-ups here. Uh, we ended up moving away from the, uh, the more closely, more, more intimate uh, conversational, more dialogue uh, as, we, as we built the extension. But on the top right, you can see some of these, uh, the, the initial mock-up for the extension uh, interface itself. 
and this was, you know, I, I think we, we kept pretty pretty uh, faithful to it, but we ended up uh, making some changes as we as we developed. We took some advice from our project sponsor, as well as some other people, and we decided to you know iterate on this design a little bit. And I think it ended up, you know, in, in some ways better than, than what we initially uh, what we initially designed with the uh, with the extension layout. But you know, overall, we, we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of uh, big dreams of what we wanted this extension to be. And so over the development process, we ended up. Uh, Trimming some things, trimming some things down just to get to the real, the real core of what we wanted to, what we wanted Stick It to actually be, and what we wanted it to do. So when we started this project, we had no idea how to build a Chrome extension at all. None of us have ever done it before. So the first step of our process was to research everything that would go into building a Chrome extension. We researched things like APIs. We researched. Uh, the languages we would need to use, we researched how we were going to get it to interact with the website in the first place. From there, we built a basic framework of the pop-up window that we wanted to display for our extension. And so we just had a blank window and we had buttons and basic button functionalities to switch between pages. Um, throughout the project, we changed that basic framework to suit our needs for this project, and uh, we ended up with what we showed you today. Um, also, during the project, we were we discovered during programming the login process that we were going to need to use a web service for that, as we had we didn't really have a good secure way of doing it ourselves. So we found Cognito, and we decided to use that for the login, and from there we decided to use AWS for the other services that we were going to need for the database and transferring data. As we were developing the Cognito login and all the user management features, management features we were also starting to develop the actual functionality of highlights and notes on the web page. This was without like having any data being sent to the database. This was solely just having the functionality of highlights being left on the page as well as hopefully having a note show up. We were able to get the highlights all done pretty well. However, the notes took us, gave us a lot of like challenges. Chrome extensions have a lot of scripting limitations and because of that, we had to find ways around it. So on the actual web page, we went through all kinds of different design changes of how we were going to display the note or how what we were going to do to get the note into the web page. And this is how we eventually came up with the new design that we have of opening the new page and having the notes displayed there. From there, that's when we actually started working on actual communication with Lambda and with the database. We wanted to make sure from the extension we can communicate with the database and send information over through a Lambda function. That way we have that middleman to manipulate the data and change it how, it, how it's needed. Once we actually had that communication, we started sending data over, data from actual highlights or data from, sending data that's from the highlights and from the notes to the database as well as making sure we can retrieve it. And then once we got that data, we were trying to make it you know, formatting it in a way that we can put it inside the HTML and make it look nice and, you know, small UI things to make it sure that we can have a, a pretty clean extension. As we look to enhance our current features, there are some improvements we can make to alleviate our user experience. First, we have a plan to enable users to comment directly to another user's comment. Now, Users can only reply to a certain paragraph, uh, and only view the certain uh, only view uh, the other's comment on the same paragraph without being able to respond there. This feature facilitates kind of Socratic dialogues for allowing, allowing for more in-depth uh, in-depth discussions on the very specific topic. Second, we are also will have a plan to enable users to mention uh, another users. In their on their uh, comments, as you browse our product, you might see uh, that some users show the very similar use uh, similar uses of our product. They will ask a question or answer in a very similar way of thought process with you. So by mentioning them on your comment, you can initiate uh, very uh, ver you can initiate in-depth discussion with them. Third, we have a plan to make a feature, uh, uploading, uh, uploading feature. As our uh, content, customizer content, accumulates, they will fall into categories. Uh, 
uh, like those two that are very relevant to many users and those that are relevant to only a few users. So these features in a, uh, ensures that um, the universally relevant content will gain higher visibility to users. So it will help users can valuable information easily. Now, uh, Stickit is ex exclusively designed for only open source textbooks. However, our vision is to expand its capability to encompass all the web pages. The internet is brimming with a lot of variable content, at the same time, very unreliable bot generated content. As AI advancement, with AI advancement, the unreliable and bot generated content will grow so fast. Our product ensures the users can interact to each other on the web page so that it can help them distinguish what is valuable content and not. So this overall will improve our all internet users' uh, online experience. Any questions? Um, uh, what would you do, or is, is there any mechanism for, say, con uh, controlling uh, troll uh, content, okay? So someone hits on and leaves garbage or, you know, offensive material or anything else, um, is there a way to prevent that or to, you know, uh, essentially moderate it? At the moment, we do not. However, that is something we considered and we something we thought a lot about. The upvoting idea would be one way to kind of limit like what's shown. So if there is like a troll comment, it could be downvoted and it just be less shown. And then another idea we had was having limiting the extension. Since this extension is mainly for students, we thought about the idea of having only students with like a, a school email or something like that being allowed to use it. We have thought about it. It's just not implemented yet or implemented in the extension at the moment. And another idea we thought is uh, we make a filter function that certain very bad word is inside the comment, we can disallow them to save our uh, Chrome extension. We could implement that feature of filtering the content on a Lambda function to where as the, as the data comes into the Lambda function before going to the database, we can check it there before actually sending it there or not. Any other questions? So uh, you mentioned this could be a potential solution to the advent of AI. What about if it is AI, the one that is doing the use of your app and doing the comments? Oh, that would be also going back to like the uploading and downloading. If it's just AI botted content and users recognize it, that's it's their option to like upload it or download it to make it either less visible or more visible. But that's the inherent problem that it is really difficult for, for regular Absolutely. people to know if it's uh, a bot or not. But with our extension on the textbook, if there's a question or something about the textbook, if the bot generated content is correct, then it might, you know, it doesn't matter as much. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it would be uploaded at the top and then answer the question. Correct. And of course people can and of course people can discuss people can discuss within that same paragraph. You know, they can, you know, if, if a bot generates some content that's, you know, maybe not quite right, but there's this little bit of nuance that's missing or something like that. Then people can respond to that and say, well, it, you're kind of right, but you're missing this thing here. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're forgetting about this. And so the, the ability to, to ask questions and then have discussions in this, inside the text of a textbook is what allows you know, AI to go from you know, random trash that's just randomly generated in a, in a paragraph to you know, only the useful stuff, only the stuff that people actually care about. Uh, it was a real question brought in the Stack Overflow because of the Stack Overflow yeah. banned yeah, AI banned, responses yeah. uh, and you could have asked, well, why not allow AI responses so you can just upload them that both. And what they said is the way that AI works, it's inherently going to sometimes provide your own information. So, you know. so, so maybe one way that you could do it, there are AI detectors and maybe you could have that text analyze and maybe even flag it and say AI detected here. That was one thing we did discuss, even yeah. adding, intentionally adding an AI user that would respond to questions and then be marked as like AI yeah. or something. Um, why are you limited to the open source textbooks right now? What what technical aspect limits you there? 
right now there's actually nothing really limiting it. If we were to open it up, it would be it would function on other websites. Mm -hmm. We just limit it to OpenStack specifically. Like right now, it's not online textbooks. Right now, it's specifically OpenStack. Okay. So we did that so as we were developing it, we didn't have to worry about too much about format changes and stuff, as well as you know like moderation issues. Mm -hmm. Having it limited on one website, you can kind of control it a little better. So I can go on EDCNN. If I were to open it up, you absolutely could. <laughs> and I can leave comments again. Right. Good, and then they turn them off. <laughs> I, I didn't see any demonstration of the search functionality. Is there a way to like search across my notes? Oh, yes. Um, yes. Yeah. It, it, we did search, I think, at the very head, like a question to search for the question. You can search for, you know, everybody's notes, just it doesn't matter the over the textbook, it doesn't matter, the, yeah. you'll search for all notes or there's a little toggle I where see. you can search specifically yeah. for our notes. Actually, that when we had a question about that toggle, they, I couldn't see an indication to see what that toggle actually meant. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how the user knows. That was what one thing we didn't get to that mm -hmm. would definitely be added. Just I like, a little character or something. Yeah. Well, it's also very hard to do if you don't have direct responses. Like your system architecture diagram, I, I noticed something. It showed the DTC and all that wonderful stuff, and it showed Lambda, and then you showed the uh, EC2, um, EC2 instance stuff. How yeah. are you guys using EC2? There's Lambda in it. Um, are you just implying that, hey, it's Lambda is executed on EC2? Or like, are you guys actually using EC2 for something? We are. Yeah, EC2 is kind of a cloud company power. So in on the EC2, we can uh, facilitate Lambda and RDS. So it's a kind of a online CP. Oh, no, 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 I get what the EC2 is. Uh, I'm yeah. saying, how are you guys using the EC2 in this instance? Uh, because it is on there, but if you just, if you're using Lambda, the whole point of Lambda is here. I don't have to manage EC2. That's the whole point of Lambda. Like, it's functional as cool. I'm just function, uh, functional as a service, basically, as a yes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, are you guys using EC2 for anything on here? Yeah. Or is it just you highlighting that, hey, at some point down the pipe, this is running on, on EC2 when it's my Amazon somewhere. Is that what that, that is implying? Uh, can you specify your question again? Oh no, so are you guys using EC2 for anything here? Uh, we are using only Lambda. So we should, I believe we're using it for what? For the search, isn't it? If I recall correctly, Lambda will search. If I recall correctly EC2 um, relates to uh, the, the security of the communication between AWS services. When we were initially implementing um, the, uh, when, we were, when we were initially integrating into, into AWS, um, we, we were running into their, their security policies a lot. And so I specifically remember dealing with EC2 in handling communication between services. That was, we that might was be mistaken. I, that was right. That was right. That's, that's, that's what I remember from it, but this was months and months and months ago. This was, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I suspect this is issue not be on there. Yeah, this was like that. And then, um, and there, there was no reason, like, you know, since you already implemented, like, username and password authentication for Cognito, just enable, like, social auth. It's, it's much easier, right? So, like, I could sign in Gmail and I don't have to, like, trace the data. That was so, at the beginning, when we did start with Cognito, that was one thing we were going to have, yeah. like, logging in with Google or logging in with, you know, other services. Yeah. But on the extension, we were just struggling a little bit with having it on there because of, like, script limitations. Yeah. And that's when we decided, let's just I go with Cognito. That is something that could be implemented, we just couldn't at the time we didn't get it. Fair enough. One thing is that they did say they could limit it to just the CM flex students. Yeah. So that is one answer that was valid to yeah. having their own authentication. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other critical questions? One more? Still one question. No? All right, good. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.